Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And as you can see, we have another mail day. There's actually, I don't think there's a lot in here, but it's a very big envelope. So at least it's a bubble envelope and just checking that all the cards can drop here. You can actually see the cards. So I know where I can and where I can't go with the scissors. So let's just whoop, break this in half here. And here we go. These are the cards. And it's just a little mail day. I just wanted to share it with you guys. Oh, don't want to spoil the cards yet. So, wow, this looks, this looks, this looks very bent actually. Uh, let's take these out. Hopefully they're still in okay shape. Yeah, they seem to be a little, oh, they're very much bent. Very, very much so. Wow, look at that. Yeah, probably the best thing to do when you ship is to just put, wow, I mean, look at this, is to just put um, put some cardboard in there or use, of course, top loaders, but when you don't want to do that, it's probably best to just use, um, just use some cardboard next time. So look at the quality of this, look, look, it's completely bent. They're cool cards though. Luckily, I think these are not too expensive. This was just a small mail day, so, here we see a rabbit wombat. So we're gonna kind of like try to fold it. It's a pretty cool card, it's two green and two. And it reads wombat gains plus two plus two for each creature enchantment on it. A Tekken does not cause rabbit wombat to tap. So this is one of these cards you've got rabbit wombat decks, usually uh, including an enchantress in here as well. And then you just go off. So they're, they're, it's kind of like a tier three, tier four old school deck, but it's just a lot of fun. and. I mean, look at the art. I mean, how epic is this card? So maybe if I put it under a book, I can kind of save it a little bit. Um, let's take a look. Let's try this one. Look at this. <laughs> oh, man. This really, like, just for everybody who's, like, new to sending stuff, it's so important not just to put it in an envelope or just put a piece of paper over it, but just really, like, use... Let me show you here. Use... A top loader, um, you know, this is just a dirty, you know, this is one I got, looks very dirty, but the inside's fine. And this will protect your card, you know. Um, the other thing you can do is just get two pieces of cardboard and, and put the card in the middle. That's a solution as well. But okay, we'll, we'll have a look. And here we see a wild growth. Ah, this is a bit, I'm a little bit sad about this actually, because look at the beautiful connection um, condition this wild growth you got a little print dot here but the card is in a beautiful condition or was in a beautiful condition and now it's all you know ah, gonna put it under a book gonna hope the best but it's you know it's not ideal it's not what you want to see you just want these cards to be really better protected so we'll We'll put it in here and we'll put it under a book. It already looks a little bit better because it can, this card I remember like, I really bought it because it just looked so incredibly beautiful and I do love the art and wild growth. And I only have one wild growth at the moment. So this would be my second and the one I have is in, in pristine condition as well. So when I saw the quality, it's still, I mean, the card is still in good condition. It's just that those bends, that's, yeah, it's gonna be tough. I think if I put it under a book, maybe I can save it. So let's have a look at another one. And this is another rabbit wombat. Let's see if we can save it a little bit. I mean, the art is still epic. Like who's the illustrator? Gaia Foglio, of course. Like he, he always kind of makes funny art if you notice his art style. Um, I don't know if you've seen, I think that was Phil Foglio who made a design for the Brain Geyser like the original design, um, but it didn't get it, get a, approved because it was just too cartoony. And that's like, that's really his style. It's like he's eating popcorn, isn't it? That's what I always thought. Like he was going to the movies and he was just going, eating popcorn and being really excited about a movie he was watching. 
Very cool. Very cool card. Like there's there's a lot of fun stuff to do with this. So I mean, hopefully, hopefully we can still kind of save it. Like another way actually to send these. So if you if you top load a cardboard is great, but also just putting some some cheap cards, not old school cards, because but some like some newer cards that you're not playing with anyway, and just put them over to protect them. That can work as well. So here we can see this one. Look. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's almost like it's a foil, right? Don't those foils always always curl up? I mean, I wouldn't know. I own zero foils, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this was already there. Oh, can you see? Yeah, this was already there. So that's I, I don't think that's anything new. Uh, okay, let's turn it around and we see Drafna's Restoration. Yeah, so this card I knew was already in in, in pretty bad shape. Um, I've got one that's in, in in an okay shape, and I thought if I have two, then I can possibly play it. This is a card that I think, was it last year or something? The card really spiked. I, I mean, I hate spikes like that because they always drop down. And I think what you have to understand, and of course, this is not a finance channel. I don't like trading in cards at all. I like, you know, not for money at least. But um, I mean, good for you if, you if you do, but it's just not my cup of tea. <clears throat> for me, it's really a hobby. You know, I just enjoy playing these cards, looking at them as well. I mean, just art. Stunning Amy Weber, right? I believe. Yeah, Amy Weber. Like I, I recognize her art. It's always got like the mechanical touch to it. Uh, just like a card like uh, like Time Elemental, for example. That's so typical Amy Weber. Um, anyway, what I wanted to say is that uh, what you have to realize with these prices is they are so easily influenced because there are just not a lot of cards, especially when they're cheaper cards. So there are not a lot of cards and there are not a lot of people that are selling their cards. So... It's quite easy to just buy a big amount and then relist them at a higher price. And this changes the average of the selling card. So it's actually the card itself is still the same card. It's not worth more. Like sometimes you see spikes in decks in cards because certain decks at certain tournaments have had a really good result. It's what you, for example, saw with Azure Drake, um, which is just a normal legendary dragon. It's a 2 4 for 4 um, but it's a great way to work around the city in a bottle and somebody had it in their sideboard, won an old school tournament, and then you saw a small spike. That's kind of a natural, I would call that a natural spike way of things, but these buyouts are just uh, incredibly annoying. I think at the moment, the um, uh, there's another card, Antiquities, which is a great card, by the way, Uncommon One, I think. Transmute Artifact, that's the one that's that's really valuable at the moment, really spiked, and I think, in my opinion, it's overvalued. But like I said, it's not a finance channel, and I'm, you know, I'm always in it for, you know, I want to keep cards affordable, so you can just play and brew, you know? That's always my thing. So anyway, these are the cards, and I have to say, they already look a little bit less wobbly. Well, maybe that's, maybe that's a bit of wishful thinking, but, um... Anyway, beautiful cards. So I do want to thank the seller for offering these. And uh, just remember next time, use a top loader or some cardboard and you'll be absolutely fine. So beautiful cards. I'm going to use these. Um, thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. If you would like to um, support the channel, become a spon sponsor of the show, um, you know, help me keep making content, then you can become a patron of the channel. So there's probably a link popping up right now. So that is a great way to help me if you enjoy the show. Um, what you can also do just to help the channel grow is subscribe if you're not a sub yet. Uh, like the video, share it on your socials, leave a comment. Like how do you, do you send cards out? And if so, what do you use to make sure that Cards don't get bent. Oh, and tell me about your best rabbit wombat build because I'm always interested to hear that. Now that I think about it, these two actually are kind of like a match. Well, it's an enchant land. I can cast it on the wombat, but they could work in the same deck, you know, when you add uh, an enchantress to it. Anyway, I'm, I'm blabbering. Um, where was I? So if you want to support the channel, leave a comment. Let me know what would you build with rabbit wombats and... Uh, Drefnus Restoration, have you used it in a brew? I mean, I would like to, and I'm curious to hear from you if you use it. Um, this was it. Let's quickly go to the end scroll and let's check out all the amazing, fantastic, super great patrons of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. What shall we do with the
Ik het als figuur te somber gezien.